In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Little children, say between three and seven, get amazed by things very easily. You don't just see this in their reaction to dinosaurs at the National History Museum, or some incredible thing they see on TV. But even things that adults and teenagers are just not bothered about. Maybe you've had this experience, I, I know I have, where there's a five-year-old in the family and she comes running into the room and says, Mom, Dad, uh, Sis, come and see this. Come and see what I found in the garden. Come and see it. And everyone kind of runs outside to see it. And it's a worm. Um, and maybe one of the parents kind of pretends to be amazed or tries to share the amazement. But the teenage sister is like, whatever, it's just a worm. And, and that happens quite a bit. But probably as we get older, the things that amaze us become fewer. We get amazed when something is new to us, uh, when we don't expect it, when it takes us by surprise and we are astonished and filled with wonder. And as you get older, it kind of happens less, although not all the time. I think that's one of the reasons why, uh, how comedy works. Comedy makes us surprised or amazed at something that we, we had forgotten about. And the same with good stories and artists. They help us to see things in a new way, maybe a funny way or an interesting way. So where is this going? Here is the question. Have you had a moment in your life when you were amazed, truly astounded by the truth that Jesus is truly physically in front of you at Holy Mass in Holy Communion? Pope John Paul II once wrote that each Catholic is called to rediscover what he called Eucharistic amazement. Eucharistic amazement. But I wonder, how many Catholics have ever been shocked, astonished, overwhelmed by the totally amazing truth that at Holy Mass and in the tabernacle of our church, we're not dealing with bread. We're not dealing with an inert senseless object, we are dealing with Jesus. Jesus under the appearance of bread. Jesus, whose soul and divinity has now united with what was once bread, but now shares in his physical nature. This is awesome. This is amazing. And my goodness, perhaps the defining moment of your life is the moment that it suddenly dawns on you that bread isn't bread. It's Jesus. Okay, so there's a kind of silly TV show in the US called The Masked Singer. I think it's here also, uh, but it seems bigger in America as clips have somehow made their way onto my YouTube uh, home screen. I'm not exactly sure if it's the same here, but in the US version, basically someone is singing a pop song on stage wearing a really crazy costume, maybe dressed as a flower or an animal, so there's no visible means to tell who's really singing. And the judges and the audience, they try and guess who is behind the mask. Because the person's going to be famous. It could be a politician, could be a sports person, an actor, a journalist. You can't see who it is. And there might be a few tiny clues. But the main thing you've got to go on is the person's voice. And if someone is a really bad singer, uh, if they're voted out by the judges, everyone calls out for the singer to be unmasked. And then suddenly, you get to see who it really was. And obviously, on television, especially this American version, everything is completely over the top. People's reactions are like, I can't believe who it really was. This is the craziest thing ever. My mind can't take it in. Basically, people are amazed because the truth wasn't the same as the appearances. It wasn't a lobster. It was a politician. It wasn't a jellyfish. It was a basketball player. The only thing you've got to go with is what you hear. And if you recognize the voice, you kind of trust that what you see doesn't count as evidence. Now, this admittedly is a very trivial example, but maybe it will help some of you a bit. When we come before Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, seeing, touching, and tasting, none of these tell us that it's Jesus. 
but his words, what he says, is reliable. Let's listen to some bits of the gospel uh, today. In front of Jesus is a crowd of Jews, and he tells them, if they want to find salvation, they need to eat the bread of life. Then he explains, by bread of life, he means himself. I am the bread of life. And then he doubles down. He makes it totally clear what he means uh, by the words he's saying. My flesh is real food. My blood is real drink. If you do not eat my flesh and drink my blood, you cannot have life in you. Now, jump forward a few weeks in the life of Jesus to that Last Supper. And at that sacred religious meal, Jesus takes the bread in his holy and venerable hands. And with eyes raised to heaven, to God, his almighty Father, he fulfills those words in today's gospel. He says, this is my body, which will be given up for you. At that last supper, what must have been the Eucharistic amazement of those 12 apostles? Jesus is sitting there, and Jesus is holding himself. That bread is now animated by his soul and divinity. It's no longer bread, it's Jesus. This amazing miracle allows Jesus to enter into our world at every point in her history, the good times and the bad times. Imagine the Eucharistic amazement for the persecuted Catholics in England during the time of the Reformation. Imagine their wonder and joy as the priest secretly came and offered Mass in their houses and brought Jesus, the physical presence of Jesus, into that time of fear. Think of the Holy Masses that were secretly offered by prisoners in the German concentration camps. Think of Jesus brought in Holy Communion to a sick person or someone dying in hospital. Jesus can change a situation just by being there because he is God. But you need to have eyes to see it. Or rather, you need to go beyond what you see to see that behind the mask, behind the costume, this is Jesus. The defining moment of my life, maybe this is a cliche because I've said it a few times, the defining moment of my life was when I was age 17. I experienced this Eucharistic amazement for the first time. Suddenly I got it. Suddenly I realized it. And maybe there are some of you in the church right now for whom it hasn't really clicked. But how much I long for you to discover, to be amazed that this really is Jesus. And for Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament to be like like the sun around which everything in your life gravitates around, everything. I know, I know that some people haven't been too pleased or haven't been overly wild about the fact that I've come to the parish, to be the parish priest in this parish in Southborough. Mass is too pious. We don't do the sign of peace. There's now this kneeler at the front of the church. But in the context of Eucharistic amazement, these things make sense. If you are amazed by Jesus being physically present at Holy Mass, if you are in awe of the fact that, that we have been chosen, summoned to be here by Jesus, to worship him and receive him, if you are struck by that, Holy Mass has to be totally fixed on that truth. And everything else, all the other distractions, have to be peeled away so we can be fully devoted to him. Let the whole world fall silent, for Jesus is here in the hands of his prophetic instrument, his imperfect priest. Let the whole world be stunned and amazed. Jesus is here. And even though none of us are perfect, and frankly, maybe if we're honest, some of us think very little about Jesus during the course of the week. In spite of this, Jesus never fails to allow himself to be made present at Holy Mass. And he never leaves our tabernacles. He wants to be with us. He's not here for his benefit 
but for ours. My friends, I wish for us all to be amazed at the splendour, beauty and mystery of Holy Mass. And like that little child I spoke about in the beginning, when she is amazed, she shares it with others. She tells mom, dad and her big sister. She goes and tries to get them to have a look at what it is. You've got to share amazement. Amazement demands to be shared. And that's what this uh, mission week is about. Sharing our amazement at who God is. We have discovered an amazing secret. We have discovered the identity of the one who is behind the mask. It is the Lord. And we've got to share this. Because also, Jesus says salvation, eternal life, depends on how people respond to his real presence in Holy Communion. Unless you believe and try to live up to the fact that Jesus is truly present in Holy Communion, you cannot have eternal life. So humbly and with true love of our neighbour, we share this truth. With eyes filled with wonder and amazement, we gaze upon Jesus, hidden in the Blessed Sacrament. We allow his glance to touch and transform us. And then we live the rest of our lives trying to draw others into this mystery. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.